at the weekly this week. The gimmick is that there's no scaling. I'm ready to figure out what the hell that means for me. <laughs> I think that it means um, lots of sniping. Let me be like a bumbling, let me be like a befuddled housewife. She's not befuddled at something simple. I know everyone wants to just like make me out to be a, mis a misogynist. It could be, she, maybe she's befuddled by uh, like quantum entanglement or something like that, okay? It's a very befuddling thing. Why don't you just take this for the moment? Did you see the Reddit post where the girl was like, what, what the hell is going on? Where the girl was like, my unemployed boyfriend thinks that he came up with a proof that breaks mathematics. And it was like, the idea was that, and I'm not smart enough to know why this is obviously wrong, but the idea was like, mathematics hinges on the idea that 0 0.9999999 repeating is equal to one, the integer of one, which means that actually it's zero or something like that. Anyway, he messed up the limits. But according to Lindsay uh, Lohan, the limit does not exist. You ever consider that? Me as a kid thinking that I figured out time travel writing on my notebook paper in 11th grade physics that all you have to do is travel pass, uh, faster than the speed of light. What's some of that? Everyone knows that? Not in 2005 they didn't. Buster. Ooh, I'm crazy. We have to go back. There's no other way. Oh, no, I'm not crazy. Did you see the tweet about the guy who has $1.2,000 in DoorDash from Hooters? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, you don't need me to tell you this, I'm sure. I mean, $3,000 from Chili's is what everybody fixated on. And there's a lot there as well, because, like, that's just insane. Um... But spending $1,200 on Hooters DoorDash is insanely funny. Like, there's, I didn't know that it was a joke from 30 Rock, but there's that 30 Rock joke that's like, to celebrate, we should, we should get takeout from Hooters. And then the guy's like, why would we get takeout from Hooters? And then he said, we'll know they touched it. That's just crazy, man. It, it's how bizarre, like OMC. How about this? Oh, there was another pug there. What am I doing? Iguana, you're 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 iguan iguana, because I'm not gonna sell you. I mean, twenty five thousand dollars a year in DoorDash is also like, I mean, that's a lot, but the fact that. $1,200 of it was from Hooters is like, it's psychotic. Now I say that, I do want to say, I've never been to Hooters. My hypothesis is that the food is not that good because then it would be named like good food restaurant instead of being named a euphemism for the waitresses having particular attributes, okay? Let me put it this way. When we were in Disney World, we went to a Rainforest Cafe. And that restaurant is called the Rainforest Cafe. It's not called the Good Food Restaurant. So I think I have some understanding of the gimmick. <laughs> Rainforest Cafe kind of sucks. Yeah, don't tell my wife, though. It's very, it's cute. She really likes the Rainforest Cafe. 
The day after we went to the Rainforest Cafe, we went to a restaurant called T-Rex. And when I walked in, it was like PTSD. I was like, oh man, this looks a lot like the Rainforest Cafe. I looked at the menu, it was exactly the same menu. And the gimmick is that there's dinosaurs instead of like animatronic animals. At, at Rainforest Cafe, I ordered a Big Island Caesar salad. At T-Rex, I ordered a Dinosaurus, a large dinosaur, dino Caesar salad, like salad saurus, something like that. Same exact thing came out. The Rainforest Cafe at the Animal Kingdom is pretty legit. Brother. I mean, it's a legit Rainforest Cafe. Listen, maybe they've changed since you've been there last, but it was... We went for the kids, let's put it that way. I think we gotta go links in here. I think we gotta go, sn oh, and then some, like maybe this, pivot to this next time. Holy cow. Oh, never mind, I'm pogging. Why people gotta yuck others yum? Well, I mean, I ate there, so like I know. I mean, I, I'm I'm yucking my yuck. I'm not yucking your yum. I'm yucking my yuck. What happened to the frog? <laughs> I did it wrong. <laughs> I'm so fucking stupid. They'll give us another one. You're smoked. Oh shit. <laughs> no, I'm smoked. <laughs> it's a dang restaurant. It doesn't have an ulterior motive. Yeah, but it's not like it, the food is not good. Like, I'm not trying to be an extreme hater. I get that I'm at the Rainforest Cafe. Like, in general, don't get me wrong. I had a good time at, at Disney World. The one thing that both me and my wife said about at least a third of the places we ate was like, why is the food so shit? Like the, the rest of the parks, they've done an amazing job, but the food is like, it's a little underwhelming at most of the places. We had, we had some decent food at a couple places, but um, I mean, the, the Rainforest Cafe and T-Rex, there's like no excuse. The Caesar salad was like, the, the chicken tasted like beef jerky, it was crazy. Food at Epcot was pretty good, I'll admit. But I feel like with Epcot, like, we had two young kids with us. So I wasn't about to get, you know, like 12 beers from 12 <laughs> different fake countries around the world. Also, I kind of, I was that guy. I was at Disney World at Epcot, walked by the Canada section. I was like, I bet they'll have poutine. Cheddar and broccoli soup. Famous Canadian cheddar and broccoli soup. What the hell are you talking about? Drink was a Molson Canadian? No, I walked my ass over to Belgium and got something that tasted like a bottle of perfume. It was okay. What was the best thing you had? Listen, I didn't know that you guys know so much about Disney. Like if someone brought this up to me six months ago, I would have been like, I have no frame of reference for what you're talking about. But now every time I say something, people are like plus two, plus two, plus two. I'm losing my mind. Best food we had? The uh, Tusker restaurant in Animal Kingdom was a, was a pretty sick African food buffet. That was really good. Can I, this one will blow your mind. This will, it will shock you. You will not believe me, okay? Because what I'm about to say is going to sound crazy. The Toy Story themed restaurant, Roundup Rodeo, in Toy Story Land in Disney Hollywood Springs 
is it goes fucking crazy. It was incredible. That place sucks. You suck. Okay, it's just the same person typing horrible. Okay, so it's, it's your word against mine. That's why it's not, it, just because they're typing it over and over. I'm not shocked. The sides were good. The barbecue was pretty good. And the best part, the barbecue is like free refills, which is the only thing at Disney where they're not bending you over a barrel. I mean, like a, water is like $3.75. They come around, they're like, do you want some more brisket? I'm like, I better fill up now because I don't want to pay nine bucks for a blueberry muffin at breakfast. It was good. That's not barbecue? Listen, you Texas motherfucker. Brisket isn't barbecue? Come on. The barbecue in Epcot USA goes hard? Motherfucker, you're going to Epcot and you're going to the American Pavilion? You're in America. The whole gimmick of the place is that you could try stuff from around the world. Your ass walks to the China stall and you're like, mmm, bacon cheeseburger dumplings? No thanks, I don't like ethnic food. Take me back to America. I didn't even know, I'm being sincere with you, I didn't know there was an America part of Epcot. I thought because the whole park was in America, like just everything that was not, Ep like in the food part was America. Hang on, this could go insane, right? What am I doing? I don't know. Also, thank you to the world at large for validating me, okay? Because I had a great time at all the Disney parks. My personal ranking it differs from the, the canonical ranking, I'll admit, okay? I would say for me, number one was Disney Hollywood Studios, okay? I thought they had... Uh, give me a one. Oh. I thought they had the best uh, rides, the most exciting rides. Number two, I would probably say Magic Kingdom. It's classic. Number three... I would put Animal Kingdom, number four, I would put Epcot, with the caveat that if it was just me and my wife, we would have torn up Epcot, could easily be at the top of the list, but I'm not out here trying to get hammered on, you know, beverages from around the world, uh, while also trying to take care of two kids who are, like, my nieces, so, like, if I lose them at Epcot, I'm gonna end up, like, dead somewhere, or at least feeling very bad. That being said, at Animal Kingdom, we rode Kilimanjaro safaris, okay? It's the only theme park I've ever seen in my entire life. You get in a fucking Jeep, they drive you out into the African savanna, and they're like, boom, there's a fucking elephant. There's seven giraffes. There's 10 gazelles. There's a wildebeest. There's three lions. There's a fucking hippopotamus. There's a hippopotamus in the theme park? We got off of the ride, and I was like, that's one of the best theme park rides I've ever done in my entire life. Everybody else in the party, eh... Eh, eh, it's not as good as the ride where you get in a fake reed raft and go down a little canal and look at puppets of fake animals from the world of Pandora. And then I, I, I was getting gaslit, so I would Googled while I was on the toilet one day, I Googled Disney World Rides Ranked, looked at like 10 different lists, every single one, there's like 58 rides at uh, Disney World, okay? Every single one has... Kilimanjaro safaris in like the top eight. So I'm just, I had to do that for my own sanity and to defend myself a little bit because I, I thought that I w was just an idiot or something like that. I thought I was being a caricature of myself that was like, you know, oh, my favorite part of the theme park is the rides. I wasn't. I was being a smart guy. You're out of here. You fucking suck. Give me the win. We're going, we're going for it. Oh, I don't have enough gold. <laughs> Get out of here. You fucking suck. There we go. This is the ticket right here. Anyway, Kilimanjaro Safaris is sick. I would highly recommend it. But I mean, if you're going to Animal Kingdom, you're going to go on Kilimanjaro Safaris. That's just a given. Yes! No! <laughs> Four wins? Really? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Anyway, I had a good time, by the way. My, this, what you're getting right now, again, you don't understand. Or maybe you do. I've been with an 11-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 2-year-old as essentially their chaperone, making sure they don't die in Orlando in the hottest fucking weather that's ever existed in planet Earth's history. 99% humidity, 36 degrees Celsius every single day, plus it's the damn monsoon season. And they're kids, so we're on vacation, so we got to be positive about everything. Now I finally get a chance to let a little bit of... The, the venting happened, if you'll forgive my sus verbiage, and it's, it, in, if anything, taking a mouthful of the bitter and then a mouthful of the sweet, it helps you appreciate the full flavor of the vacation. Can I bring something up too? And I don't, I don't think this is an American thing necessarily. I think it's a, I think it's a worldwide citizen thing. Why are so many people going to nice restaurants? I look at them, they're dressed nice, they got suits on. They sat down before us, their food comes out. Husband and wife, I'm not yucking your yum, okay? But you both ordered the burger. You put, you put on a, a nice dress, you put on a tailored suit. You got on the monorail, you went four resorts away, you're paying like, you got a cocktail that's like $21 or something like that, and you're both eating a hamburger for dinner? Like, it's just surprising to me. You could do it. I mean, you're, it's your money, and I'm sure the burger tastes good. It might have even tasted better than what I got. It's just the, all I'm saying is it's a little bit surprising. I don't know. Bat me. You got the Caesar salad? No, I got the Caesar salad at the fucking Rainforest Cafe because I knew everything was going to be ass anyway. <laughs> or at least not, not good. Let's not say ass, but... I don't know what to order at the damn Rainforest Cafe. I'll have the sloth mozzarella sticks. Like, I have no idea. They're not, obviously, they don't have, like, a specialty. It's the restaurant has a damn gift store in the restaurant. You have to walk through the gift store before you even get your food. You don't even know if you like the food and they're like, do you want to buy a t-shirt with our logo on it? Come on. Ah, come on. Ah, come on. Why, why am I rolling? There's no good animals. There we go. The only good Rainforest Cafe is the sole location in Canada. I honestly didn't know um, that Canada still had a Rainforest Cafe. There used to be a, um, there used to be one in Metro Town, I think, but... I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. It's in Niagara Falls. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, I went to a Rainforest Cafe with Kate in Osaka, and it was, I stress this very clearly, it was okay. The one that we went to in Animal Kingdom was pretty not good in my personal opinion, but it might have been my fault for ordering a salad at the Rainforest Cafe. So I don't know, man. T-Rex has no excuse, though. But do not eat at the Outback Steakhouse in the Orlando airport, okay? I didn't even tell you. So we, the waiter came over to the Outback Steakhouse table where we were sitting. Very nice, had a great attitude. Said, like, can I get you guys some drink? I said, I'll have a bloke-sized IPA. He said, no problem, sir. Brought it over. Then he said, and this is a simple misunderstanding that happens all the time in communication, because communication is complicated, okay? He said, are you guys ready for food? And I said, I think we're good. He then said, oh, okay. And he took all the menus and started taking them away. And I understood what was happening. 
He thought I said we're good as in we don't want to eat. What I meant was we're good to order. I said, oh, actually, we will order some food. And his demeanor changed like it snapped. He was like, oh, and then like threw the menus back on the table. And then I was like awkwardly reading out like what everyone's going to have. And he was just silently writing it down. And I was like, <laughs> we did not get good service for the rest of the meal as well. But it is an airport outback steakhouse. So it's kind of like, what do you expect? Kate will validate for you, by the way. All these stories are 100% true, fact-checked by real American patriots. You miscommunicated? He was being a child about it. See, I agree with the part where you said I was right, but with the part where you said I played a role in it, for some reason I take offense to that. <laughs> I don't feel like I miscommunicated. I feel like when you say we're good in response to are you ready to order, the good means I'm affirming your question. Yes, we are good to order. If he had said, do you want any food? And I said, You're, we're good. Then he would be in the right. In my Language is complicated, okay? Also, I'm sure Kate will tell you the same thing. Love my nieces. Had an amazing time. They were so good with my daughter as well. She got an intelligence buff. They, they gave her like 20 rare candies or something. She came back evolved. One of my nieces ordered chicken tenders for every single meal. Who cares? We're on vacation. The kids' menu at every place is always like, you know, mac and cheese, chicken tenders, hamburger. Like, you can't win. So if you want the chicken tenders, get the chicken tenders. At the Outback Steakhouse, the chicken tenders arrived, took one bite and said, I can't eat any more chicken tenders. <laughs> Come on! You had a couple of other options that you could, you could have mixed it up once or twice. She probably feels great today because the Outback Steakhouse po poisoned uh, my wife and I, but, but then honestly, she was like, I can't eat any more chicken tenders. And I was like, that's okay. Can I have one? And then I ate one and I was like, these are dry as hell, man. So I'm just saying, if you ever find yourself in the Orlando airport, if you're at Terminal B, flying to Canada, maybe, or Puerto Vallarta, don't eat at that Outback Steakhouse, okay? Hang on, I'm the best to ever do it. It's one of the worst airports in America. Not my ass having a horrible time at the Orlando airport. Uh, for all the stuff that happened that has pre previously been covered in anecdotes, but then also the first time when we arrived at the airport, it took us like, I didn't even talk about this one. We landed. You have to take a train from where you land to get the baggage claim. Who the fuck designed that? That's like my ass in Factorio. Why would you ever not have the baggage in the same building as where the airplane comes in? That is insane. We had to get on a train and take the train to another area where the bags were. Me and the plane were this far apart when we arrived at the airport. Anyway, then... We get to the baggage carousel. The sign says, your flight, the bags are on carousel 29. I flew WestJet, okay? Not to brag. When we get to carousel 29, there's a very over it looking guy who says, in case you're just getting here, if you came in on WestJet, your bags are on 28. I said, oh, okay, thank you, sir, for your help. Not my ass sitting on carousel 28 for like 25 minutes watching every bag come in, departure airport, YYZ, 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 YYZ. I'm like, man, this is sure a lot of Toronto bags. I don't see any of my bags. I don't see anybody that's even on my flight, except I was talking to people and I was going, hey, where'd you guys come in from? And some of them were like, oh, I came in from Vancouver. This guy told us to come over here. I, after like 20 minutes, I said, fuck that. I go over to 29. I see 
like a hundred people from our flight. They're just standing there. And I was like, oh, the guy said they're on 29. They said, yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. The dude is literally just out of here trolling. Like you are getting paid to make the airport worse. You understand? I'm not one of those people that's like, you should be fired. But like you're actually, your presence here is actually making the airport worse financially and logistically. But it didn't even matter because that 25 minutes that we waited for our bags, who cares? Our bags weren't fucking out on 29 anyway. We had to wait like another 15 minutes for our four suitcases to come out. And then we finally get them. Ah, oh, the hard part's over. Then we get in the Uber with the dude who's eating pistachios with one hand and then driving with the other hand and tailgating. And then people are honking at him and he's looking at me like, what's going on? And I'm like, you're the one driving the car, dude. Anyway. But then I was like, what the hell is wrong with this airport? I look it up online. Seventh best airport in the United States. Are you kidding me? I've been to some bad airports in the U.S., but like that, they must have paid somebody off. Cause like, let me just put it this way: it doesn't hold a candle to Payne Field. Yeah, does it beat O'Hare? It probably beats O'Hare. Okay, but what doesn't? What about SeaTac? I've only flown out of it and into it a couple times. I think SeaTac's okay. Minneapolis, St. Paul. Though I'm loath to say something positive about Minnesota because we're, we have rivalries with one another, or at least I have a rivalry with them. Minneapolis, St. Paul was good. I mean, I'll just be honest with you. I don't expect every airport to be able to compete with Payne Field, which <laughs> has like is one building and has like two flights a day. But I mean, LAX, LAX was better than Orlando, in my opinion. Not good, but better than Orlando. Whatever. LAX is bad, man. Hopped off the plane at LAX. So true. Got my, my keys and my cardigan. Is that what she says? Something like that? We win these. Ooh! Denver's pretty good. I don't think I've ever flown into Denver. By the way, I don't really like being one of those guys who's like, here's my opinion on every airport in the world. Because it's like what business travelers talk about instead of having a personality. I'm sorry, it's not really what I mean, but kind of. But I, I know because people are saying there's no good airport. That might be true, but there's definitely bad airports, okay? Like there, most of the time you're at the airport, you're not stoked. But there's some times where you're like, I'm not stoked, but I, stoked, I should say. Let me just be honest with you. Like, I have, I have a home airport bias, but the Vancouver airport is really good. It's usually, you get through it pretty quick. The, the big problem with the, it's relatively compact, which is nice. The real problem with the Vancouver airport is that they have like pretty subpar food options in some of the terminals, okay? But it's, it's good. It's otherwise pretty good. Toronto is okay. I used to think that the Toronto airport was horrible. Then I flew into Montreal once and I said, I'm going to keep my mouth shut from now on because I didn't know how bad it could be. And in America, Seattle, San Francisco, even I, I can't remember what airport we flew into in New York. But even then I was like, well, it sucks that it's like a 45 minute drive from the airport of the city or whatever. But the airport itself got us in and out really nicely. Even I flew out of Miami once like 10 years ago, and I'm starting to think all this shit I talked about Miami, I gotta take it back, because this is not Disney World. Disney World, they obviously they create a Pleasantville sort of bubble, and everyone's happy in there. I thought I hated Miami until I went to Orlando, okay? I think maybe I need to shut my mouth about Miami. I think Miami might be like uh, the crown jewel of Florida. I didn't realize I should have known when we were landing in Orlando and it was like Saskatchewan. I'd like normally when you land in like a place on earth, 
there's some topography. I'm not asking for Mount Everest, but the, you know, there's hills and maybe like some geological features. You could see the whole state while you were landing in Orlando. I could see clean to Savannah, Georgia. There's no elevation. I don't think there's a hill in the... Walt Disney put the first hill in Florida, man. It's crazy. The highest point in Florida is 300 feet high. Is that true? Yes, that's fucking crazy. Is it Space Mountain? <laughs> is it the Tower of Terror? <laughs> I guess you're not talking about the tallest building. You're talking about the tallest, like, naturally occurring stra Okay. Listen, if you, like, like living in Florida, that's fine. I'm just like... It was one of the only places I've ever been to where when I left, I was like... What the hell is going on here? Oh, you stork user. And then the people. I can't talk smack about the people because most of the people at Disneyland, sorry, Disney World, were probably not from Disney World. And by Disney World, I mean Florida. <laughs> I'm just being honest as well. Can anybody here, because this is going to sound like crazy. So I need you to back me up unless you disagree with me, in which case I need you to just shut up. I've never heard so many uh, accents from the north of England as I have at Disney World. I didn't hear a single person with like a, a posh London accent, but I heard a ton of like, I can't even think of a city in the north of England. What's north of Manchester? Don't say Scotland, okay? Sheffield, thank you. Newcastle, Leeds. Yorkshire, Yorkshire was what I was thinking of. this what do you think about this no 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 yeah 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 yeah. is this just like this weekly is sniper city so everyone sounded like sean bean well like listen brother this wasn't shakespeare right is disney world everyone sounded like they were from the same place as Sean Bean, but instead of being cast in Lord of the Rings, they were cast in Too Hot to Handle, which is the only other place where I've ever heard this concentration of accents from the north of England. You know what? This could work. No, by the way, nobody's backing me up in this take whatsoever, so... Oh! <laughs> so never mind. This is not like when I said everybody in Whistler is from Australia and people in chat went, so true, so true, so true. I'm getting not backed up precisely by anybody at all here. That's real? Unlike that motherfucker at the back of the plane. She shouldn't have to make an apology video, is my personal opinion, okay? She didn't do anything wrong, I think. She just... Oh, this is a crazy team, man. How the hell did you do this? How the hell did you get the... Oh, because you had a one-up on your fly, maybe? She didn't do anything wrong. She just, she had a breakdown because she was on like psychedelics or something like that. That's, it happens, I guess. 